How's it going everybody? Steve here. Welcome back to Command Center Wargaming. So today we're going to have a look at the new Apocalypse boxes. Now the question isn't really if you should buy the Apocalypse boxes or not, but I guess the question would be more like which Apocalypse box should you buy? Um, because, you know, everybody loves their bundled boxes and, you know, for me, I love when Games Workshops do these big kits. Um, because you do, you do save a little bit, right? Considering we are, you know, buying little plastic figures, if you call that a savings, but we're going to buy them anyway, so it's like a savings. So what I'm going to be doing in this video, all right, uh, I'm going to be having a look at the boxes, having a look at what's inside, having a talk about, you know, their viability in competitive scene, also in terms of value for money, and also in terms of just pure coolness and appropriateness, and um, yeah, hopefully it can help you make a decision on uh, which uh, which Apocalypse box you want to get. Maybe you want to get all of them. I don't know. But we're going to be looking at it because I myself still need to decide which one I want to get. Um, they're just all so good. So first of all, let me just say uh, all these boxes are good value. All right. Uh, depending, you know, which way you go about it, what way you look at it. Okay, um, they're good value, okay? Like, you can't really go wrong with these boxes. And if you do need stuff in the kit, I would recommend grabbing it. Even if there's one thing you don't like, you know, then you could always just sell it over eBay or trade it or whatever or make it a conversion or something like that. So, you know, especially if you're starting out, um, some of these armies are really, really good starting pack armies, especially the Imperial Guard one. Uh, it's really good. Also, the Space Marine one as well. You know, it's a fantastic starter box. You could pretty much start an army with it. I reckon you got maybe about 700 points, like nearly a 1,000 points in there. So it's a, it's a really good way of doing it. So I'm just going to go through quickly. So we know we've got the Apocalypse uh, kit here, the game kit. We've got these movement trays, which I feel are a bit steep. We are working off US dollar this time, not Australian dollar. Um, the reason is, is basically because it's just more uniform. Um... And then we've got this new kit. Now, I'll just touch on this quickly. This is a new Crusader case, right? Now, it's not bad. It's meant to be bigger than the, the, the standard battle cases or whatever they're called. And it's meant to be for Apocalypse games. You can have a look inside here and we can see what's going on. And it's pretty deep, you know. I don't know. Look, I'm just not a massive fan of these cases, to be honest. Um, they're okay in terms of build quality and everything. But for me, it's the foam right? The Games Workshop foam. Um, they're good. Look, don't get me wrong. They're really good for vehicles, like big units, like Bane Blades or Knights or something like that. But I just find my infantry just literally roll around too much in these little zigzag foams. Um, but uh, yeah, look, for, for, the, uh, for Bane Blades, bigger vehicles, flyers and things, I think these are a pretty cool option, uh, to be honest. Uh, and it looks to see that they've actually got some of this zigzagging going along the sides now. Before, they used to have it just flush, uh, flush straight, you know. So, but anyway, all good. So, let's keep going with that. I just wanted to touch on that quickly. Cards, dice, and some of the new units, whatever. All right, now, here we go. Let's let's start going through the kit. So, the first, the first kit is the Tyranid Spearhead Detachment, which is going to set you back 170 US dollars. Right, and um, it's a pretty decent kit. All right, you can see here you got the sprues here. All right, and you got these nids, and look, the issue is the issue is with them. You get a hive tyrant, you get a carnifex uh, brood, and a trigon and a tyrannifex. All right, and look, if you're missing these units, or if you want like you know to sort of like build up. A more bulky army, say if you've got like a whole bunch of nids and stuff like that, um, you know, or you want to expand your gene stealer cults out to be a nid army or whatever, this is a pretty good option. Um, and it's just a really good option, I guess, you know, to get some of these larger creatures. You, you pretty much just get one for free. So you save about $90 with this box. So you, you're pretty much getting one of these big guys for free. Uh, and it, it's decent in my opinion, comes with the wings and everything, right, so you get all the, you get all the parts in it, now, do I think that 
this box could have been a bit better? Well, yeah, for t for two reasons. Number one, so like all of these all of these guys here, you know, in terms of competitive play, aren't really the greatest choice. Um, and also, you know, Tyranid armies work better with the smaller units, you know, with the Gaunts and stuff like that. Um, so I would have liked to have seen a box, chockers full of warriors, uh, Gaunts, you know, gene stealers, stuff like that, like a big mass army box. Um, because I think that like, you know, when people are going to go out to buy a big box to expand an army that revolves around hordes, that's sort of what they're going to be looking to get. And then they'll go out and then they'll buy these sort of bigger units to fill that army, you know, like bits of pieces. Um, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't think... But then again, it's not meant to be a starter army, is it? So, you know, it's not a starter starter collecting box. It's more of a, it's more of a, 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 a Titanic sort of apocalypse box where you would be fielding, you know, bigger amounts of stuff. But I still feel... Maybe a 50-50 mix of some smaller units here. Um, you know, Gene Stealers, Gaunts and stuff. Um, you know, sort of mixed in with these bigger guys would have been a lot better option. Some Warriors, you know, so maybe some Biovores, something like that in there, you know, would have been a little bit better. But still, look, a really cool kit. Fantastic if you want to go painting them. Um, you know... Probably not my f number one choice of kit to pick up, although I have wanted this guy for a while. Um, but yeah, you know, they're okay. It's not a bad kit. You save about $90 for that one. The Space Marines kit. So once again, you know, should you sort of pick up the Space Marines kit? Well, there's absolutely nothing here every new here, everybody. It's Primaris Marines. It's a whole crap ton of them. Right, you're gonna get uh, basically a Promaris captain, Promaris intercessors, three of them, a Redemptor dreadnought, uh, three transfer sheets, and a yeah, well, that's it, really, isn't it? So, but still, really good for the for the points for the price. Um, you know, it's just Space Marines are one of these things that you. You can never get enough of these Primaris guys, right? Because you never know when you're going to need an, an extra squad of intercessors or, you know, an extra squad of, uh, an extra dreadnought lying around, you know, or, you know, you might want to convert it up. So, look, if you've got the budget, I would definitely go for this. Uh, even if you don't assemble it now, get it ready for when you need a captain, get it ready for when you need, like, another dreadnought, you know, get it ready for, you know, when you you know, need more intercessors, all right, so the sprues are pretty much stock standard, they're the multi-part kits, uh, they're not snap fit, so you can actually see the sprues in here, all right, so yeah, and it's basically a big, big Primaris battle force, you'll save around about $110 for this, so that's pretty good, that's a pretty good saving, you're essentially getting roughly an intercessor squad and a captain, roughly, maybe not so much, you know, like the whole captain, but maybe 60% of your captain for free, you know, or not for free, but, you know, compared to buying them individually, which I, which I think is, is pretty good, that's a pretty good saving, um, that's a hundred dollars, you, you can literally go out, you could buy, nearly buy another start collecting box of that, you could go and you could get the, uh, you know, that Space Wolf starter kit, which I just did a video on, um, like literally 15 minutes ago. You can go through, get that for that price that you've saved, add another, you know, add another squad of intercessors and a battle leader and some aggressors onto this. And then I dare say you're easily at like, you know, heading towards a thousand points and stuff. So, you know, definitely, definitely worth the value here. Um, for me personally... I'm not sure if I'll be grabbing this one. And the only reason is because I've already got a backlog of the Imperial Fist Space Marine Force, the, um, and also the Eldar one the, on backlog with like nothing assembled. Um, and the, and the, the Tooth and Claw. So I've already got a crap load of Primaris 
just sitting here in boxes ready to be allocated a chapter designation. Um, but, you know, they, they, they will come in handy. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe in a couple of months I might grab one if they're still available. Uh, but it's not my first choice. But yeah, look, if you're new to the hobby and you can afford the price point, go for it. Eldar. So we got the Crafts World Detachment, okay? And you'll get a Spirit Seer. All right, you'll get three Wraith Guard, two Wraith Lords, and three Craft World Transfer Sheets. Now, these are overall a pretty okay units, but I don't think that their Spirit Seer is good. Uh, I don't think they're a complete, you know, this is a must buy right now, unless you're absolutely sort of, you know, missing these units in your armies. Um, I feel as though they're a little bit weaker, okay, compared to other options. The strongest, the strongest thing with Eldar are the, you know, are the minus two to hit uh, armies where you're dealing with flyers and, and, and bikes with Alatok and things like that, or Beltan or something like that. That's another strong version of Eldar. Um, these guys are okay, don't get me wrong, but I mean, there's just so many better things you can field with Eldar, in my opinion. Um, and there's a whole box of them. I mean, do you really need that many? If you do, then this could be the box for you. Um, or if you're just expanding on an Eldar army or you want to do some conversions or something like that, then this could be a box for you. Um, Ruler Cool, this could be a box for you. Um, but is this sort of like a must-buy? I'd say probably not, especially if you're in a competitive play. Um, and again, like, I mean, you know, I don't know if you'd be fielding that many of these units in a 2,000-point game of Eldar 40k. So it kind of seems a little bit redundant to me that even if you did want some Wraith Knights and stuff, Wraith Lords and stuff like that, um, that you basically would buy this box, you know, spend like that amount of money when you could just buy a little detachment and shoehorn them in and spend your money on flyers or jet bikes or something like that. Um, but look, you know, you do save a fair bit from this one, okay? Uh, you save $100, roughly about $100 which is pretty freaking good, all right? And um, it's definitely a savings, so yeah. I'd have a look at it, you know, if you're LR or if you, you know, but if you're starting a new army, probably not, all right? Go for some flyers, go for some jet bikes, sort of, you know, and then just buy a squad or two of these and, and get them in there. Uh, I dare say, you know, more of the start collecting boxes will probably do you a little bit better if you're just starting out, Okay. But as I was saying before, you know, that is the point of these boxes. Um, they are basically there to, you know, for apocalypse play. They're not necessarily a, a start collecting option. All right. So then we get an Adeptus Mechanicus Vanguard um, detachment here, right? And you will get a Tech Priest, three Castellan Robot squads, uh, and uh, two Adeptus Mechanicus transfer sheets, and some Data Smiths. Now, Overall, you're going to be saving... Let's see, what did I have this down as before when I did the calculations? I don't think you're going to be saving too much from this one. Um, sorry, guys. I just I just lost my... I just lost my calculation there. But I think I think you're saving around about maybe 60, 70 bucks from this one. Not a, not a great saving there. Not a terribly great saving. Um... Just give us one second. Yeah, $70, $70 roughly. You're going to be saying, I just found my my calculation there. $70. So it's all right. You know, it's not too bad. Um, I just can't see you fielding a whole crap ton of these guys all at once. And there's better things you can... I mean, look, if you're going to be playing Apocalypse as, as Admech, you know, in my opinion, you're going to be running Knights, right? So it's kind of just like, you know, how many of these guys are you going to take? Um... And the other thing is too, look, I'm telling you now, I, I would be looking at getting this box if it was chock full of infantry, rangers, stuff that I could make my, you know, my, my little sort of command point farming detachment with, um, and, you know, and, and building up an army from scratch. Because if I'm going to get a, an Admech army going, like I've got just a couple of units of Admech, but 
I don't have like a full army. Um, if I was to get an Admic uh, by this box, I would want a box with heaps of infantry in it. Okay, maybe some Dune Crawlers or something like that. Um, you know, I just, yeah, I just can't justify this box really. You still save $70. I think this is one of the weaker bo boxes on the list, to be honest. If not the weakest, uh, to be honest. It's a shame. Because I've been looking at some ad mech, especially, you know, running in with Imperial Knights and stuff like that lately. But, um, but that's that. Alright, so that's the ad mech box. And next one, which is one of my primary picks that I'm looking at at the moment. Because I'm building like a little Scion army. Is the Astra Militarum Spearhead Detachment. Now, I've already got a couple of Lehman Russ. I've got an Imperial Guard army, um, but you know what? You can never have enough Lehman Russ. Now, that's a selling point for me in this kit. Chimera, I don't really give a crap too much about the Chimera. Um, you know, like you can always sort of fit a Chimera in somewhere. Some casual games, you know, you might be able to double it up as a Hellhound or something, you know, depending on what your opponent, you know, how strict they are. Um, you know, the silhouette's pretty much the same. Ch chuck, like, two batteries on the back or something, some sticky tapes and batteries for some barrels. Um, you know, and obviously competitive play, that's probably not going to wash, but it is an option. Uh, you got your command squad here, which, I mean, you can pretty much kick these guys out to be whatever you want them to be. So if you need a Master of Ordnance, you could get him out of that one. If you need a commissar or even a sign commander, you can sort of get him out from that one. Or even, you know, uh, yeah. So, and there's another heavy weapon in there. There's a couple of heavy weapons. So, you know, like, I mean, if you need some more plasma guns or whatever uh, for your scions, you can do that. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit of a medic sort of thing. So that's it. heavy weapons. I mean, you know, like, you could definitely, you know, if you need some mortars, there you go. Right, you can get some mortars in there, or even some lads cannons, or whatever, you know, or just whatever he was, or just keep them spare, like what I do. If I have over a stock of like miniatures, um, I basically keep them up the back there, and um, I basically go through and, and just open them when I need them. So if I'm like, oh hey, I need some like you know lads lads, because oh, I knew I had some spare you know lads cannons somewhere, just grab it off that, you know, because the meta changes. So um, you know we've got to sort of keep up with it now. But the real value of this kit, and the real reason why I would sort of buy this, this box, um, the rest is just a bonus, really, are the Lehman Russ. So the Lehman Russ are pretty decent right now. You know, there are things a little bit, you know, I feel a little bit better. Uh, stuff like the Helverins, the Warglaves, and things like that, they have an invol. They do similar damage. Uh, although, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, these do fire twice. Um, but they're around about the, f the same points, the same wounds as well. Um, slightly higher. No, I think they're the same toughness actually. So, which is good. But, um, but yeah, look, it's always good to have some rust handy. Now, what's interesting is to my knowledge, you can actually fit these out, you know, to whatever kit you want. So you could put battle cannons on there, vanquishers on there. You could turn these into punishers. And that's the beauty of this kit. You know, it's always good, even if you don't need them, like, right now, right this second, it's always good to basically have a a few Lehman Russ just, you know, in the warehouse, so to speak, in the factory, ready to go if you want to start a new list and, and get going with stuff. So, right now, it's really tempting for me. Um, I'm thinking that that, uh, that Lehman Russ list there might be the go. So, yeah, and you will save... What did I have here on my little calculation? You are going to save... It's a, it was a pretty good pretty good saving. It's about, about $80. About $80 US dollars you're going to save, right, for that. So you're going to get... You're pretty much either getting... You're basically getting a Lehman Russ for free, which is, which is nothing to sneeze at, especially because you're going to get all the sprues with it. You're going to get all the weapons with it, so you can keep them, like, for conversions later, if you want to convert something over. So, I really think it's 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 very strong kit. Even though the savings aren't as high, I just think that, like, you know, the application of, of, of what you're getting in there, the usefulness of the units, like, you know, all of these can be pretty much used in competitive play. Whereas, the rest of the kits, maybe the... Space Marine one, 
But the rest of the kits that even have gone through so far, you know, there's not really anything competitive in there. Maybe the Spirit Seer. Um, but that's about it. So if you're coming at it from that standpoint, uh, and I do sort of put together a lot of my lists competitive, um, you know, not, not crazy cheese land competitive, but, you know, competitive enough, then that's something that you might want to think about. So the next one is the Chaos Space Reap Battalion. Now, in this kit, you are going to save pretty good saving of about $115. Now, I have noticed the older the models are in the kit, the more you're going to save, right? So, yes, we do have a crap ton of, of Space Marines here, Chaos Space Marines, um, but you also get a Terminator Lord, and you get bikes. Bikes are really cool, and they're the cool, they're the cool chaos bikes as well, um, which are which which are looking really awesome. And it's uh, I went into the Games Workshop the other day, and unfortunately, they actually don't stock these in store anymore. You got to order them, so uh, it could be a cool way of getting a hang uh, a handle on uh, some of these bikes. You know, if you want to get your Chain Lord of a bike rocking up, you know, this is sort of a way you could do it. Um, this is also on my top pick list. Uh, you know, look, you know, those Chaos Space Marines are absolutely fantastic. They look great. I know some people are a little bit shy of them in the competitive scene, but I still think, you know, if you use them properly, uh, I think they're okay. Uh, you know, and, um, they look cool. They're fun to paint, you know, and, and you can just have a really fun kit. And you're saving $115, so why not? Um, and the Terminator Lord can be a uh, a sorcerer as well. So, you know, you could just keep him spare. You know, oh, okay, I need a Terminator Sorcerer or whatever. So, um, I don't know. I kind of look at these as like a reserve kit. Now, in this, you get a Terminator Lord. You get three cast Space Rings, 30 squads, 30 miniatures, uh, two Chaos Bikers, and three... Chaos Space Marine transfer sheets. Um, so it's good. That's really good value for $170. Really, really good value. So I would definitely have a look at that one. Um, maybe not my top pick. You know, I still think that like my top picks Imperial Guard and then these, Prom the Promaris and the Chaos Space Marines, they're kind of like, you know, if you got some spare cash floating around sort of thing. Um... But, you know, I, I wouldn't run out and, and buy them just for the sake of buying them. So, all good. All right. So, we've got the Orc Spearhead Detachment. All right. The Orc Spearhead, once again, it's decent value. Uh, you're going to save about $80 from it once again. And, you know, you get one Big Mech, one Mech, two Killer Cans, and two Death Dreads. And uh, the thing is, though... He's got his little shock attack gun. What I really would have liked to have seen here, again, this is from someone who isn't really an orc player. Uh, I know a bit about orcs. I know, you know, the, the, I've got the gist about how they work. Um, but what I really would have liked to have seen is a starter box, an apocalypse starter box with heaps of boys, heaps of knobs, just heaps of infantry. Like, honestly, if that was this in this box, I would have bought this box. Because I would have been like, look, you know, orcs aren't like my thing, but they're one of the armies I, I don't really have like that much of, and, you know, and I don't have, you know, I don't have enough to play like a two thousand point game, and you know, so I could have, I should, I would have been like, okay, you know what, I'm gonna pick this box up just so I can have like, you know, some orcs there, so I can, I can throw them around. Um, but as it stands for me, and this, this is just me, like I said, it's, uh, it's cool if you're gonna do the painting side of things. But the, the cans look, you know, they're not very competitive, um, you know, and like even on the table, you know, orcs just don't roll like that. They're, they're not an army. They're not, they're not a space marine army, you know, I think the way that this box is kitted out is kind of like, you know, that they're, they're going to be, you know, sort of like fielding, you know, the units that space marines would, you know, sort of mid tier sort of dreadnought units and things and support units and that orcs. Don't roll like that, you know what I mean? You know, what you want from orcs, you want mass infantry just just, just blobbing, essentially. 
Um, so yeah, decent. Look, decent enough. You still save about eighty bucks from it, and um, you know, and that's great. But I will give this one a miss. It's a bit of a shame because it would have been nice uh, if I could have got a massive big treasure chest full of orcs. Uh, I would have. I would have done it and literally just contrast rushed painted them just so I could have another army there if I needed it, just make it like a muck, muck around army. Because one thing I will say, though, about the Orcs is they're really fun for conversions. So one thing you might want to consider is you might want this kit for conversion parts. You know, I mean, it's a very expensive kit to, to, to buy for parts, but there certainly are a lot of parts in there. Um, and it's something you might want to consider. But that's that's basically that one. And then you've got the Necrons. So the Necrons are pretty decent, actually. 170, you get a Crypt deck, two Canopic Wraiths, squads of Canopic Wraiths, two, two squads of Tomb Blades, a Ghost Arc, and, and transfers. Um, ghost Arcs, you know, are good. They've always been good, all the way for 7th edition. Uh, the, you know, the Wraiths are decent still i don't think they're as good as they were in seventh but they're you know they're, they're still solid um and the tomb blades fast attack you know what can i say they're cheap they're good um they got decent firepower for the price as well so you know uh back when i was playing necrons more i've got a whole i think i got like eight thousand points worth of necrons here um somewhere and, and i had like heaps of these guys and I just used to run them around and, and just sort of like, yeah, because for their price point and their speed, like they're very, they are weak. You can buff them up a bit, but for their speed, they are they are very, very fast for what they do. And, um, and you know, good value, decent value there. Um, so, yeah, look, and you will save. Let me see, what did I have down for the Crons? Let's have a look. It's $91. $90, $91 you'll save from this kit. So you're pretty much getting your Ghost Arc for free, which is pretty decent. Uh, I've got enough of these guys already. I've got like 30 Wraiths and three of those Ghost Arcs, and I can't even remember how many of those uh, of those of those Tomb Blades. But so I'll give this kid a miss personally. But that's already because I got a massive Necron army. Um, the only thing I don't have is this Commander guy, but you know. I'll pass on the on the surfing dude. You know, he just basically looks like a you know a, a Necron Lord sort of surfing on a on a scarab and like you could keep bash out. I'm not gonna go out spend, you know, in Australian money anyway, $280 um just to get, you know, like a <laughs> like that unit. Um I'll be good, you know. But uh yeah, look, it's uh if you're missing any of these, it's it's definitely good kit, definitely good value. You don't save as much, but what you get in the kit is is quite substantial um, for a competitive standpoint as well. Okay, so then we got the last one, which is a Tau Empire Vanguard detachment, and you'll get a Tau Commander right in all the sort of uh, the plugins for him as well. Yet two Crisis Battlesuit teams. A Riptide Battle Seat and two Tau Empire Infantry Transfer Sheets. Now, now you will save. What did I have down there? 115 bucks. This is actually the best value box, in my opinion. And by the numbers that I've done as well, um, you know, not only for like what's in the box, but monetary value as well. All of these units you can use in competitive. You could go through these drones can be converted to shield drones. You could do whatever you want. Um, you know, you've got your battle suits there and stuff like that. Okay. And they're always going to be useful and a riptide. Okay. You've literally got a riptide and, you know, rule of cool alone. I want a riptide and look, Tau, they're not my number one choice. It, Tau sit in a really weird place for me. Um, you know, like I sort of like them, but I don't, you know, they they some of this stuff looks really epic, you know, like the Riptide and their, and their, and their Dreadnought and stuff. Um, 
you know, and these, these battle suits don't look too bad either, you know, the fire warriors look decent, then when you start getting into, like, the crew sort of stuff, the hammerheads, that kind of stuff, I kind of just get a little bit, like, yeah, I don't know, they're fishy kind of looking stuff, you know, um, a lot of units go a little bit fishy looking, and, like, even the manta bomber and all this kind of stuff, it's, it looks good, but yeah, um, you know, I've been thinking about getting a, like, Tau Army for a while. Tau are a very different play style, um, whereas they are extreme range army. They are very powerful when they're in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing, um, but they have some weaknesses as well, which is, you know, surprisingly long range fire. They're a they're meant to be like this uber range army, which they are. They can focus fire down units really well, um, but they are also very weak against artillery. So that's the kind of way you get to tower. You know, you shell them. You actually sort of outrange them. It's, it's with Eldar as well. Like a lot of people, um, where they go wrong with Eldar is they've got to understand that like, you know, you know, Eldar, they are powerful, but the Achilles heel is... Number one, they're glass cannons. Number two, um, in terms of toughness anyway. Dark Eldar is another story. But um, but the other thing with them is, is most of their weapons, like they've got a couple of weapons which you can shoot across the board, but most of their weapons are sort of like running around the, the sort of mid-board range. So if you can sort of kick back and focus down that long-range stuff, the fire prisms, you know, the reapers and things like that, shining spears... Um, you know, then you're basically going to have, if you could get away from them, um, you could sort of deal with the Eldar. But um, the Tower are a little bit, Tower are a little bit weird in that sense where they, they're really good at firing, but if they're not run correctly, they can be really, like, bad as well. So I feel as though Tower is more of a veteran army. Um, and like I said, I've, I've played up against Tower many times, and they've been brutal every single time that I've played them. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, to me, they're, they're one of the top four, uh, so my top four competitive armies would be, uh, not in any particular order, but, uh, Dark Elder, Elder, Imperial Guard, and with a Knight Detachment, probably, and, uh, and Tau, to be honest, those will be my, my top, my top four, sort of like, oh, holy poop armies but um yeah look i'm certainly considering it and you know i think for the value alone this would be the number one kit because it's a competitive kit it's actually even a new start kit like you can literally buy this and like two or three start collecting boxes from the towel and you got an, you got a playable army like i reckon you've got like i reckon probably about a thousand point maybe 800 750 kind of thing um, you know, if you upgrade everything and you, you whack it all up, um, you know, you could definitely do it. If you wanted to start a Tau army, now's the chance to so grab this box and grab a few of the start collecting boxes from Tau, um, and, and you're on your way and you've got it and you've, and you've got it. And, uh, I've been wanting to do that for a while. I've always wanted to paint these guys up with like a, a, a bit of a digital camo scheme. I managed to get my hands on some metallic orange if you believe it or not which i think could work nice with a towel but um you know screw orange i think there's so many nicer colors that uh, that can work with towel um and you know what i'd like to see him in this color this turquoise color i think this would be cool the color that nearly became my um nearly became my alpha legion and look there you go it's mecha colors as well so you know what I might be onto something here i might get this box maybe I'll, I'll skip the imperial guard box i'll get this box um tower cheese tower big cheese uh if you want to upset people play tower become good at playing tower and uh and play tower and because if you find the elder are a little bit too mare for you then tower's your next bet for cheese tower a kind of what Eldar used to be, uh, I don't know, no, maybe not in 7th, but that's more Imperial Guard. I'd say Imperial Guard are what Eldar used to be in 7th. 
but tower definitely up there. Anyway, look, so those that's my sort of feedback on the start collecting boxes uh, for the apocalypse, not start collecting boxes, sorry, apocalypse boxes. And uh, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think is good, what you're looking to pick up and why. And let me know, do you think I should get the Imperial Guard box or start a new tower army? I'm really, I'm really, because I've already got, I've already got Lehman Russ here, and I'm thinking, like, in that box, like, it's, it's only the Lehman Russ that I sort of will need, and it's kind of like, well, for that price, I can just buy three Lehman Russ, but with this towel, like, everything in this box, I can literally use, so it might be a, it might be a really cool, cool time to start up, hey, everybody, let me know in the comments down below what you reckon, and, um, you know, like, share, and subscribe, and all that. I'll catch you in the next one, everybody. Keep rolling.